My name is Dr. Thomas Modine. I'm a consulting cardiac surgeon. I work in uh, the University Hospital of Lille in France, which is in the north of France. Bicuspid aortic valve is one of the most frequent aortic valve disease. It's actually the most frequent congenital disease. It could reach up to 2% of the overall population all over the world. And it leads to early degeneration and early disease of the aortic valve that could lead later on to heart failure and mortality. So the, 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 the only option that we had in the couple in the last 10 years was uh, to replace the aortic valve using a new prosthesis, mechanical or bioprosthetic. And in 2007, uh, the team from Germany suggested that this valve could be repaired. The advantage of repair is to avoid replacing the native valve with an ex external device and just try to repair the valve itself. So this is why we try to promote by showing how we do it, when we should do it, and uh, what are the pitfalls to avoid using this technique. And I think this kind of repair is very adapted to a population in Asia where the congenital disease is much more uh, important. The prevalence is higher than in the Western world. So this is one of the topics we, we, we're going to talk about. The bicuspid disease could be associated in 50% of the cases, up to 50% of the cases with the dilatation of the ascending aorta. Although the, the dilatation of the ascending aorta is an independent entity which could exist even without a bicuspid valve. So there is a pioneer surgeon whose name is uh, Tyron David that works in Toronto who was the first with another uh, famous surgeon also, Professor uh, Magdi Yacoub, who suggested that instead of replacing the ascending aorta with the aortic valve because this is a one segment uh, which we call the aortic root. Maybe we can do, do it alternatively by replacing only the dilated segment and preserving the valve. This is uh, what we call the preservation of the aortic valve while treating the ascending aorta aneurysms. The aneurysm could lead to a rupture of the aorta, so this is a very dangerous disease that sh should be treated. Uh, the problem is this preserving the aortic valve is very technically demanding and we always aim to make th things simple and uh, the modification we are proposing we're going to talk about in this, uh, this meeting is how to achieve this remodeling of this uh, preservation of the aortic valve while treating the ascending aorta aneurysm easily and simply, which could be adopted by the majority of cardiac surgeons and which could be taught to young, young surgeons also and diffuse this technique all over the world. So this is also something on which we worked and actually we have a very good backup now for more than 10 years and we're going to share this experience with our Indian colleagues. So the left carotid access is a completely different story. The left carotid access uh, came to, to the public audience when we started doing TAVR. TAVR or TAVI, the Transarterior Aortic Valve Implantation. So this is a relatively new technique which avoid opening the sternum and which could, could be done completely percutaneously to treat aortic valve stenosis. The problem that now TAVR started the first in, in man has been done in 2002 in a pioneer, by a pioneer cardiologist, which, which, which his name is uh, uh, Alain, Professor Alain Cribier. Uh, and since that time, a lot of improvement has been, has been done and uh, demonstrated, where, to a point where TAVI became a reliable, safe and effective treatment. The problem is that this big valve has to be brought or taken to the level of the aortic valve, on a beating heart of course, and you have to introduce it through a, an access vessel, which is usually the femoral access, which is the gold standard. But in some patients, because of the diameter is too small, uh, or because uh, there is a lot of calcifications, or because of tortuosities, or some other anatomical challenges, the femoral access is denied. So you have to find another access. Uh, the access that has been described historically where 
uh, transapical and transaortic axis, but they're still very invasive. You have to cut the sternum, you have to cut the chest, you have to open this interpleural space, which also much more uh, traumatizing for the patient itself. It's much more invasive. So the idea of TAVI is to being less invasive. So we imagine using another artery, which is the left cauted axis. The advantage is it has a direct access to the aorta, to, uh, to aortic valve. It could be done under local anesthesia. The left cauted access uh, is usually easy to, to learn, is easy to teach, and uh, the vessel is always of a good diameter. So we, pro we were the first in the world to propose this access in case the femoral access is not usable for TAVI. And I think for having been here many times in India, in, 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 the, in the Asian population, because of the small vessels, are uh, much more prevalent than the, in the Western world. I think this technique, uh, this access is very uh, adapted to this population over here. And uh, we have sh shown by many publications now and hundreds of cases that this access is very effective, very safe, although it, it touches what we call the access to the brain. But this is a different issue.